Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this is the next lecture in the fluid dynamics first year course. And this lecture is all about flow with friction, but in particular for turbulent flow. So this is what I'm going to cover in um, today's lecture. So I'm going to talk about um, turbulent flow, the shear stress and the pressure drop that's associated with that turbulent flow. And we're going to talk about this thing called a friction factor, which will allow us to calculate that pressure drop and how we can find that friction factor using the Moody chart. And finally, I'm going to talk about the methods to solve um, different types of problems, depending on what information you know. OK, so first, just going to take a step back and just derive or work out how um, this shear stress um, is arising from this flow and where it's coming from. So, as I mentioned in the last lecture, um, this um, shear stress comes from the fact that on the fluid on the wall of the pipe is at the same velocity as the wall. And if the wall is stationary, the fluid will be also be stationary. And that's called the non the no slip condition um, in that the fluid is there. And so because of that, there's a kind of shear force that's created as um, you try to um, move the fluid down the pipe, which is being resisted by that fluid that's um, uh, stationary on the wall. And that creates this um, uh, shear force here. And that um, uh, shear stress is force over area. It's the same as any stress is uh, force over area. And um, the area here is actually the internal um, kind of wetted surface of the pipe. So the area is um, pi d, so it's the circumference of the pipe, times by the length. Now the force that's um, required to overcome that um, uh, shear stress is um, effectively due to the change in pressure between the inlet and the outlet of the, the pipe. So the force is that um, change in pressure times by the area. And notice here that the area in this instance is the cross-sectional area of the pipe. So the force is um, the change in pressure between the inlet times by pi d squared over 4. Now if we substitute the force um, we just derived into this equation and also put in the area uh, for that wetted internal surface, then we end up with this. And if we, we see that we've got pi that will cancel and some d's that will cancel, we end up with saying that the shear stress is equal to the, um, the pressure loss um, times the diameter of the pipe over 4 L. So we've got a relationship for it, and we need to, we can, we therefore, we just need to know how the shear stress varies um, with the flow. And I'll kind of come on to that during this lecture. Now, the shear stress, um, unlike for laminar flow, where we could actually kind of derive what that kind of pressure drop was relate, related to, for turbulent flow, it's much more complex. Um, so we don't know what the exact relationship is, but we do know that the shear stress um, is a function of the, the fluid density, the fluid viscosity, um, the viscosity, sorry, the velocity of the fluid, the pipe diameter, and the pipe roughness. And if you remember um, a few lectures ago, I was talking about the Buckingham Pi theorem um, in terms of dimensional analysis. So if you can't remember how to use this technique and um, go back and watch that lecture. But we can use the Buckingham Pi theorem to um, derive this relationship. So this is a non-dimensional um, wall shear stress. And it's a function of this dimensionless group, which hopefully you recognise is uh, the inverse of the Reynolds number. And this other group, which is um, the pipe roughness divided by the diameter. And this is called the relative pipe rough roughness. So because we know this, got this relationship, we can basically write this as the shear wall stress is um, some um, constant times by the density times the velocity squared times this um, function of Reynolds number and pipe roughness. And all that, all those constants are wrapped up into this big F here. This is, note here, this isn't force, but this is the fanning friction factor. And as I said, it is a function of Reynolds number and relative roughness. So we can work out what this um, factor is and we can find um, the shear stress. Now just before I go on, I just want to talk about uh, the relative wall roughness. And this is a measure of how um, rough the, the pipe wall actually is. Um, and it's 
measured um sorry it's represented by the letter uh, epsilon and it's measured in meters or millimeters and the roughness will be defined by the different materials and the manufacture method and also the age of the material so you can imagine that you know a rusted pipe would have a higher roughness than a brand new um, smooth pipe and the relative roughness is non-dimensional because obviously it's that length divided by that length um, giving us a non-dimensional um, group so um, we derived to the the start of this lecture that the the shear wall stress um, is equal to the pressure loss um, across the pipe times diameter over four times length and using the Buckingham Pi theorem, we also said that the um, shear wall stress is a function of um, the fanning friction flow um, density and velocity and so on. So therefore, we can relate these um, uh, equal these together. We end up with this. And if we rearrange this, then we end up with the pressure loss um, is a function of the fanning friction flow, length, diameter, density and velocity of the fluid. Now, this can also be written as what's called the darcy Weisbeck equation. And one thing that's just in, important to notice here is that um, Darcy used his own friction factor here, which is um, lowercase f. And it just should just be noticed that the, um, the Darcy friction factor is four times the Fanning friction factor. So here we've got a relationship now um, where we can work out the pressure loss um, down a pipe if we can find this friction factor and this friction factor is a function of uh, the Reynolds number and the surface roughness and once we've got this we can then use this in Bernoulli's equation and so on to solve um, whatever the problem is that we're, we're trying to find out um, but one thing is that's um, very important to point out is that this relationship unlike the the relationship um, that I showed you in the last lecture for on laminar flow this is true for both laminar and turbulent flow. Okay, so as long as we know what our flow conditions are, we can find this friction factor and work out this pressure loss.